Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. And today we're going to be talking about introducing new fish to an existing community tank. So I have two really beautiful sub-adult to young adult uh, angelfish pearl scales that are going to be introduced to a tank with three existing adult angelfish that already have a pecking order that have already established who's the tank boss and who's the pair, who's the odd one out, that sort of thing. Now, with any fish, even little nano fish, there's a chance you can get fighting and other problems. So in this video, I want to tell you some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the last 25 years of introducing fish into tanks, and hopefully we can avoid that, because sometimes it ends up immediately being a you know, fin ripping, fin nipping, and scales floating in the water, bloodbath. It's really unfortunate. Now, with cichlids and certain fish, you're more prone to getting that, but it can happen with any fish. So let's talk about some of the tips and tricks that I have to help pre prevent this from happening, and some of my favorite little uh, hacks, I would suppose you'd call it, to fixing the environment and the, the setting, and understanding why fish act the way they do in preventing them from from uh, becoming violent with one another. So let's go inside, let's talk about this a little bit more, and acclimate these fish. Thanks for joining me, and let's have a good time here. All right, guys, so we are inside now, and we have these beautiful pearl scale angelfish. And what's happened is this, this one that my wife has named Betty is she's new to the tank, and she's been in here about a week now, or a little less. And she has been rather shy. She's been using what I recommend to every fish keeper to have, especially, you know, if you don't have room for the fish, don't add the fish. So I recommend having uh, breaks of sight, line of sight. So if you can have plants that are dense enough that the fish can hide, you know, down in and around them, that they can go down in here or back here, um, that's great because most fish uh, aggression and violence is territorial, especially with cichlids, rams, uh, angelfish, and even like bettas and, and things like that. You'll find that when they're being aggressive, it's not really a sustained attack where they're going to hurt the other fish. They just want them out of their area or they want to show them I'm the top dog, don't you try to puff up and take my mates. Don't you try to like strut around the tank looking all great. And the other thing, other than just plants being a break in the line of sight and giving them different hiding spots, if they're plecos or catfish, like we we can see there's a, a leopard frog pleco here and an ancestress, those kind of things, when you're introducing them, a lot of times when they get into the tank, the first thing they're going to do is hide. And that's just a natural response to being in a bag. It feels like they've been um, held by a predator or, you know, held against their will. And so they're going to just break free, and that's their first concern. But when you've got your fish, the other thing I want to explain is that these fish, I know, I know the breeder where they came from, a local breeder through a store, and they've been in a tank that I trust is clean and free of parasites or anything like that. Because parasites and infections can really cause fish to act up. And other fish in the tank will be able to sense if a fish is weakened or stressed. Fish give off hormones and create pheromones that other fish can smell. And in the case, just like humans, when you're not feeling well, your body produces something called cortisol. Or when you're stressed or in pain. And when you're sick, this also can build up. And when this builds up, the other fish can smell it. They can sense it. And they are often, it's a, it's a dog-eat-dog dog or fish-eat-fish fish world, and they often take advantage of it and try to, once and for all sort of thing, put the other fish in their place if they know that they're weak. So make sure that your fish are healthy and strong and doing well and not coming into the situation with the disadvantage. So we've got the hiding spots. We've made sure that these fish have been through a quarantine and they're clean. And we're going to pretend like I got these from, say, this tank over here. Pretend they were alone in this tank quarantining. Well, then I would rebag them up in a clear bag, uh, just like this. And I would put half or I would put tank water in here and 
pretty soon after you can once the temperatures have adjusted you can then take half of the remaining space in the bag and fill it with water from the tank that they're going to be in this will allow the the fish that are going to be the most scared that are giving off those stress hormones it will allow them to smell the other fish to understand the plants in the tank to understand if there's food around or ammonia or nitrates things like that 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 they're probably i mean not that they necessarily are probably going through a checklist in their mind but instinctually they know uh they don't want to be in a bad habitat they want to be in a good habitat and you want to reassure them of that likewise you can also as long as you know that the quarantine tank was a clean and a safe healthy tank and that your fish that you're bringing in are clean and healthy you can also introduce some of this water back into the bigger tank which will also let those fish in the open tank get a sense of what's coming in after that really fish are very visual creatures they have other senses like their lateral line and uh, some of them can see uv light and smell different chemicals that other fish can't or sense vibrations or electricity but for the most part most fish that are going to be sold at pet stores and that are community fish they're going to go off of sight and smell uh, or taste in the water and as well as i guess vibrations any subtle vibrations or big splashing lets them know that a fish is coming in the water when they're in the bag they can't sense those vibrations if you could see all the little vibrations of the fish swimming around you'd see almost these little uh drops like a drop from a, a an eyedropper dropping into a, a a bottle of water or a cup of water the way you get the rings those radiate out from every fish and so the fish are able to then kind of get an idea a mental picture it actually goes to their visual cortex of where all these other fish are and so they know if there's a big fish somewhere in the tank or if there's uh just little fish and these smaller fish are really helpful when you're introducing a fish that's going to be on the larger side which are generally the fish that are going to fight more you know oscars angelfish discus or even something like a betta um, and they're going to definitely uh, feel more at home when there's little fish and if the little fish are not freaked out and they're acting calm and natural then the big fish know that there's no big predator coming to eat them and they can relax and that's all happening here so what i'm most concerned about here is that these two adult uh these dark black moor uh angel fish are going to beat up on these ones but they uh, are of a smaller size and where a lot of people may think that picking a fish that is noticeably smaller than the other fish of its species in that tank is a bad idea unless it's a super aggressive fish like you know an oscar or a green terror or something like that red devil you you actually are more l likely to have a peaceful situation because those fish know that there is no threat of these ones coming in and strutting their stuff looking really good and taking over the either the resources the food the good hiding spots or the mates in the tank now these this happens to be a sibling of these ones and was bred either a month earlier or it could be the same batch and was a little bit bigger and got brought into the store earlier but you can see there is no aggressive behavior going on rubbing is a really good sign we call that flashing oftentimes when they rub up against the bag they're they're literally trying to sense all those sensory things we just mentioned about those fish they want to introduce one another they kind of want to like dogs sniff one another and and kind of smell each other and jump on top of each other a little bit sometimes they're kind of trying to do the same thing so we want to let them do that with the water chemistry first from the bag then when we'll let them out what we'll do before all that happens is we're just going to observe so you know make yourself comfortable and observe see if these fish get jealous and come in and scare off this one or if they start charging the bag but watch the fish body language every species of fish is going to be a little bit different but the body language is very clear amongst most fish they have a few ways they don't have faces like ours that are expressive 
uh, per se, but they do have, you know, the ability to flare their gills or their gill operculum, and they do have the ability to puff up or to kind of stand completely erect and to color up as bright as their colors go. Now this one is colored up, which also happens during feeding, but because we're not seeing any of the flaring, the twitchy behavior, the nipping or circling the bag, uh, kind of um, almost like jaws or something, we know that this is more out of excitement. Fish also color up for excitement. They communicate with those colors that, hey, I'm healthy, I'm happy, can I be part of your, your community? And so all these things go into observing it. You see, this one's actually getting a little excited. So if they, they get a little excited, they get kind of twitchy and swimmy in a uh, calm way, not in a way where they're so chaotic, they're, they're bouncing from either side of the bag and they're pacing, you know, that becomes uh, bad stress. And the other fish will sense that and also think, is this fish kind of uh, unhinged? Is it going to be unpredictable? And so what's also good is that these other little fish are semi-interested, but they're not scared either. And the last thing I would recommend is, other than having the hiding places ready, making sure everybody's fed in the existing tank, and having a good tank, you don't want any of the nitrates or the ammonia uh, off from normal. You want all those either non-existent or extremely low. And that will cause your fish not to release any of those stress hormones, those fight or flight. Because if you think about it, it's the, the, the choices are fight, flight, or freeze in wild. And the fish is either going to uh, decide that I need to attack and kill that fish to survive, or it's going to decide it's no big deal, I'm going to just go about my day, or it could decide, I'm scared of the new fish. Or these fish could say, I'm scared of these big fish and go hide. Now, because these fish have the upper hand, here is my biggest tip, my biggest secret when you're introducing fish to a new aquarium. So other than the lighting and all of the stuff that I've said that's kind of the groundwork, one of the things that can be most helpful is you throw the other fish off of their game. And if they're real aggressive species of cichlids or something like that, then that doesn't always work. Sometimes that actually causes them to be more agitated. But with angelfish, even with oscars, with plecos, with, with um, rams and discus and other small uh, dwarf cichlids, uh, cribs and things, apistos, it works really well if you move a few things in their aquarium prior to introducing the new fish. That way, it puts everyone in kind to, of a new mode of they, these, these black uh, angelfish don't have an existing space that they think in their brain. This is mine. I know it well, and I defend it. Now, if you have a fish that is in spawning condition, you want to make sure that that is not when you're introducing fish. Spawning fish are going to be very defensive. They're going to have a perimeter, and... The two types of attack you need to look out for with any fish, whether it's several bettas that you're introducing or the angelfish, is you need to look out for the territorial attack where one is, is, is in an area and they come out and they just want those fish out of their area. They want them out of their tank, honestly. And that's where having lots of breaks in the line of sight, places for the new fish to hide, That'll let them cool off. It'll let the little fish come in and kind of just tell the community that everything's chill, their cortisol and stress hormone levels will reduce, and eventually they'll work it out. However, the bad type of encounter that can lead to fish dying, and honestly, the other big worry is, is if delicate finned fish, if you have very long fins on the type of fish you're putting in, whether that's a betta or a guppy or the angelfish, the longer the fins and the more delicate they are, the easier it is for them to get injured, nipped, bit, and then that can turn into an infection or a bacterial uh, problem or a fungal problem. And right now, I just want to point out that this behavior, this rubbing, like I mentioned earlier, this fish is saying very clearly with its verbal, uh, or with its nonverbal cues, I like these fish, I know these fish. It probably remembers them from its, its uh, growing up and they look like it. So it is 
actually kind of uh, being gentle and welcoming to the the bag of fish. It's actually rubbing against the bag. It's also kind of protecting them. It's kind of drawing a line between them and the two uh, black angelfish that are adults and have kind of said, we own this tank and, and have uh, control over this. Now, it's not a bad thing when there is a tank boss. In fact, a lot of times there needs to be a little bit of that violence, and by violence I mean more of the posturing, uh, opening the mouth and um, making mouth noises, or like you just saw that one go to the top, sometimes they'll make smacking noises. But if you look at them, you just don't want their their gills to be flared, you don't want them to be... Um, straight up, you don't want them to be pacing quickly or acting erratically. Those are all bad signs and, and a sign that maybe you shouldn't introduce the fish. Or if you do, you need to really be right there to break it up if something happens. Now, while you are here, they are going to act different. So I do also recommend either setting up, You can. I mean, you could set up a webcam. That's a little advanced. I just usually sit about 10 feet away from the tank so that out of sight, out of mind, sit still, read a book or or just observe them, which to me is relaxing and fun, and and make sure that all the things we've talked about are unfolding well in the first half hour as we've exchanged the water and all that. Now, that the bad attack that I was mentioning, if they're not just protecting their territory and chasing the new fish off, they will actually follow the fish all throughout the tank and hurt them. If that's going on, you really need to remove the fish because the only solution is going to be when one of the fish is eliminated. Now, the fact that these fish are smaller, like I said, than these other angels, hopefully will be a sign, kind of like sometimes cats or dogs, won't attack puppies or kittens as much because they're no threat to their status in their little community. And you can see here, this angelfish would rather pick food off the glass than take interest in these guys, and they've only been in here about 15 minutes since we've been talking now. So I'm going to let them out of the bag, and we'll talk about a few last tips, but I hope so far this is helpful, and when you get a new fish, please just look online, look up videos of what their normal behavior is, or get to know your fish, sit and watch them, what do they do before you see any sort of scuffles or fights. And other than the gill flaring and the erect fins brightening up with color and uh, the jerky, erratic uh, behavior and quick movement, there are very unique things to different fish. You can see here, this one just decided to kind of warn that one for some reason. So, uh, yet again though, these ones seem totally at peace. And with three kind of at peace, even if these two are aggressive, as long as they're not doing that attack dog uh, ripping fins and following them into their hiding spot type of thing, it should work out just fine. So I'm seeing all the signs that I needed to see. You've been with me here for the whole process of this, and I haven't even introduced the water or dimmed the lights much. So I'm going to do those things, and we're going to check back in once they're in the tank. Thanks, guys. All right, so we have released the Kraken. We have uh, set the fish free into here after doing all the processes that we spoke about earlier but now we are observing to see how they're doing right now there's no food involved or anything we're just seeing how they treat one another hanging out in the tank with the lights on and the other fish you know all all there and active and doing their normal thing now these black uh angel fish they are uh more competitive and more mature in their size and everything so they've kind of established their place or their role in the tank and their territory and then the two of them even fight amongst each other but what it is is it's posturing so it's that territorial kind of fighting it's not going to be that dangerous fighting where you actually see the fish go after other fish ramming them in the side of the gills that's really the, the scary type of attack is when you see a fish accelerate like that angel just did, but then slam into another angel fish right in the, the side of the gills or in the belly or neck. Uh, that means that they mean business. When they're just kind of uh, running around and 
barely nipping at each other to the point where they're not ripping fins. And even with some cichlids, there may be a teeny bit of fin ripping, unfortunately. That is what you find in the wild. See the top of this fin here? That is probably because this one has just established that it's more dominant. However, once they do establish, hey, I'm the dominant one, I'm the one who is on top, the fighting will be that fake fighting, that stage fighting or that territorial fighting where they just kind of charge at each other or, or lightly nip at each other rather than actually trying to do the damage. So you can see also the beta is up front and, and doing their thing. Uh, they've all met the new angelfish and the angelfish are all a little cautious back here in the weeds but they're definitely getting along with the other one that is of their kind and honestly is probably related to them so there may be some sort of chemical signals or pheromones that you know we don't know exactly we, we don't know scientifically even uh what goes on exactly with them but we do know that they can identify uh, each other, especially in cichlids, they can identify fellow uh, fish and siblings oftentimes. So uh, now what what the big test is, is to put something like food or a cave if they're plecos. Basically, you want to put a resource that they clearly want in the tank between them and see how they respond. And if you can avoid the chasing type of dangerous fighting and aggression at that stage, then you can be almost assured that the fish are probably going to get along uh, in the long run. You won't be assured that they won't fin nip once in a while or things like that, but for the most part, they're not going to turn and fight to the death after you see that this is successfully going okay. And again, if you are someone who stands right next to the aquarium like I am right now and watches the fish and stuff, they will interact quite differently when you're standing there. They know that you have the ultimate power over the tank, and because of that, uh, they don't let loose completely. So you want to kind of walk away, maybe, you know, sit over on the couch or something and watch how they interact for another half hour um, surrounding the meal time or after you've put things in the tank like a like new caves or new rocks or sand for them if they're geophagus or um, shell dwellers or some sort of fish that that makes nests and things you doesn't need to always be food you can also use other things that are resources they compete over uh, but as you can see, everybody seems to be getting along okay, and I suspect that we will still see this top dog or top fish of the tank uh, pushing around everyone a little bit, but more so symbolically, more so charging at them and stopping before it actually hits them or hurts them, uh, just because that's, that's how cichlids behave that's they have to find a pecking order and if you were in the wild watching uh these fish you would see how badly they look a lot of them are just covered in scars and missing fins and scales and all sorts of problems uh you know just depends on the species what the quirks are but uh i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope it was somewhat useful for some of you who are trying to decide uh, if your fish are going to get along if you should even introduce them with one another and uh if you enjoy this content and other things that you've seen on this channel, please uh, hit that like button, subscribe, and if you haven't seen more on this channel but you'd like to, subscribe and take a look at the playlists or the other uh, videos that are recommended for you. Uh, I appreciate all of it, and uh, thanks for spending your time here doing a little bit of a deeper dive into how to uh, acclimate and introduce new fish to an old tank on The Secret History living in your aquarium. Thanks, everybody. Say goodbye. Bloop.